Russia has a rich history of success in human spaceflight. Russia put the first ever man in space back in 1961. Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin was the first human to fly into space. But Roscosmos, the spiritual successor to the Soviet space program, hasn't had as much success as its American counterpart NASA in the past few decades. There was once a time that the Soviets led the humans in the space race, but now it feels like even the private space companies like SpaceX are pulling ahead of national space programs. But Russia is now determined more than ever to change its path and again, reach for the stars. The key to Russia's plans to lead humans in space technology could be their upcoming Zeus project. The Zeus project is Russia's plan to develop nuclear-propelled spacecraft that will take them from the moon to Jupiter and beyond. Let us take a deep dive into the details about Russia's Zeus program. What do we know so far about the Zeus program? The public first heard about the Zeus program back in May 2021. The details were announced by Alexander Bloshenko, the executive director for long-term programs and science at Roscosmos. While giving a presentation at the New Knowledge Forum held in Moscow, Alexander went into some juicy details about their plan to develop nuclear propulsion rockets and much more. According to Russian reporting agency TASS, Roscosmos has already signed a contract with a private Russian engineering company, Arsenal Design Bureau, to start working on the proposed nuclear-powered space tug. It is also known as TEM or Transport and Energy Module. The contract is estimated at 4.17 billion rubles, which is about 57.08 million US dollars. While talking at the New Knowledge Forum held in Moscow, Alexander laid out Roscosmos' plans for a mission to Jupiter that would be using the nuclear-powered spacecraft. He explained, The combined duration of the mission is 50 months. Together with the Russian Academy of Sciences, we are now making calculations about this flight's ballistics and payload. The mission has multiple layers that involve going to the moon before heading to Jupiter. First, the nuclear-powered space tug will go to the moon to deliver a spacecraft. This spacecraft will separate from the nuclear-powered rocket and land on the lunar surface. After delivering this spacecraft to Luna, the rocket is planned to head towards Venus and use its gravity to sling towards Jupiter's satellites. This ambitious plan is scheduled for 2030. The nuclear reactor on the TEM vehicle is planned to be activated only after the spacecraft has reached a 600 or 800 kilometer orbit, which is far enough from the atmosphere to prevent natural decay and re-entry. According to some experts, the Russian TEM looks like it would weigh 20 to 30 tons. A payload this heavy would need either the Angara 5M or the Angara 5V rocket to carry the TEM into space. So why is all of this so important for the future of deep space travel? Well, nuclear-powered propulsion may offer many benefits over conventional chemical rockets. This isn't the first time scientists are looking to make nuclear propulsion rockets. In fact, the idea has origins as far back as the 1940s. A Brief History of Nuclear Propulsion as early as 1944, scientists like Stanislav Ulam and Frederick de Hoffmann had started to work on ideas to use nuclear energy to launch vehicles into space. In 1946, the United States Army Air Force saw the benefits of using nuclear propulsion to power their fighter aircraft. To this end, the Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion Program, or NAP for short, and subsequently the Nuclear Energy for the Propulsion of Aircraft Program, or NEPA, were started to develop a nuclear-powered rocket engine. Reports from the programs later identified that it was, in fact, possible to create a reactor engine by using a molecule of low molecular weight. But due to the technological limitations of the time, it was impossible to fabricate and operate such an engine back then. In 1961, the Atomic Commission and NASA started the Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application Program, NERVA for short. This program designed and developed 20 reactors to be used in rockets. It was later disbanded in 1973 due to budget cuts. It wasn't until 2018 when NASA again got the funding of about $125 million to start developing a modern nuclear propulsion rocket. With advancements in material engineering, this time it looks more promising. Russia's history of experimenting with nuclear rocket propulsion is as old as the US programs. Like everything with Roscosmos, their plans to use nuclear energy in space can be traced back to the Soviet era. The USSR space program launched almost 33 military reconnaissance satellites that were powered with nuclear reactors into orbit from 1969 to 1988. These were thermoelectric nuclear power sources that would provide power to the equipment on board the satellites. USSR was also developing a prototype of nuclear thermal rockets at the same time as NASA was working on their NOVA program. 
but the USSR project was closed in 1986. Moscow restarted its nuclear rocket ambitions again in 1998 under the presidency of Dmitry Medvedev. The program to develop a nuclear rocket has cost Russia 233.24 million USD from 2012 to 2018. This was divided between Roscosmos, the space agency, and the Rosatom, Russia's nuclear energy organization. It makes sense that Russia now plans to be one of the first countries to use a nuclear rocket to go to space. How Nuclear Propulsion Works So, before we look at how nuclear energy can be used to power rockets, let us briefly look at how chemical rockets work. How Chemical Rockets Work Chemical rockets take advantage of Newton's third law of motion. This law states that every applied force on an object has an equal but opposite reaction. Chemical rockets use rocket propellants and oxidizers to create a combustion process. The rocket's thrust comes from ejecting mass from the rear rocket as it burns in the chamber. The force from the ejecting mass is directed downwards, and in turn, the rocket is pushed towards the sky. But chemical rockets such as these require combustion to supply the necessary thrust, but this is not the only technology that can power rockets. Over the years, there has been development in non-combusting sources of thrust. How Nuclear Propulsion Works Nuclear Thermal Rocket Instead of using the chemical energy of propellants to power a rocket, a nuclear thermal rocket uses nuclear reaction from nuclear fission to provide the energy. A nuclear thermal rocket uses a working fluid like hydrogen. The hydrogen is heated using the nuclear reactor on board the rocket and then is forced to expand through a rocket nozzle to create thrust. This has the same effect as a chemical rocket, and this thrust allows the rocket to roar into the air. A nuclear reactor on a nuclear thermal rocket works the same way as a nuclear reactor in a power plant. First, heat energy is generated from the fission reaction. Then, the propellant, liquid hydrogen, is pumped through the reactor core. This heats up the hydrogen. This heated hydrogen is then expanded and accelerated out from the thrust nozzle of the rocket. This creates the thrust for the rocket. Nuclear Electric but this isn't the only way nuclear energy can be used to generate thrust. Another way to use nuclear energy for propulsion is by combining a nuclear reactor with an electric rocket engine. The electronic propulsion system uses the heat generated by a nuclear reactor to heat up and accelerate ionized gas. This ionized gas is used as a high-speed ejecting mass to generate thrust for the rocket. These are also known as iron or plasma engines. This is the route Roscosmos is taking with their Transport Energy Module program. According to Arsenal Design Bureau, between 2016 and 2018, they had conducted several studies and made early designs of such a spacecraft. The mock-up prototypes include a truss carrier section and a propulsion unit module made for future spacecraft. According to details released by Arsenal Design Bureau, TEM will be powered by a nuclear reactor but will also have a system of radiators to excessive heat energy as power sources. This power will be used to meet the power needs of spacecraft, like powering onboard equipment. The Advantages of Nuclear Propulsion One of the main advantages of using nuclear thermal propulsion is that, simply put, nuclear reaction generates more energy per molecule than any chemical reaction can. This, in theory, can make nuclear-powered rockets more efficient. Scientists estimate that nuclear-powered engines can cut the travel time to Mars by 20 to 25%. To put this into perspective, currently, it takes chemical rockets eight to nine months to make that journey. Imagine cutting down the trip by months. This is less time astronauts have to spend trapped inside a spacecraft as they make their journey to Mars. Another advantage of using nuclear thermal rockets is that less weight will be taken up by fuel since it's more efficient. Nuclear thermal rockets will also cut down costs as less amount of fuel is needed to perform the same journey. The future of rocket propulsion could be in nuclear propulsion. For now, we can only wait and see how the Russian nuclear experiment plays out.